So hi everyone, I have Neeraj with me who recently scored a 760 on the GMAT on the 8th of October. As you can see on screen, this uh, is his performance and uh, this is his background. So 2008, he graduated and he'd been working for quite some time, more than a decade, in fact. So I'd like to really talk to him about this. Uh, okay. Hi, hi, Neeraj. I can hey, see you. Up? Hi, finally, we get to talk. Very uh, it's nice. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah, very nice connecting. So Neeraj, a couple of questions, first of all. So what motivated you to write the GMAT at this juncture? You've been working for quite some time. So... Yeah, I was, I, I've been working for quite some time and uh, let's see. And uh, around, uh, I signed off in May mm. and uh, my parents are quite old and I started feeling that it's time to, for me to shift to a short job. Mm. And uh, I talked to a couple of friends, a lot of friends actually, and then mm. decided that MBA is the right way for me. Right. I'd always had this in the back of my mind that I want to do an MBA. But so just, what was your you know, job actually? Like what exactly were you doing for these many years? Uh, it's more of a hands-on job. Uh, you are on board uh, oil tanker vessels. Uh, mm -hmm. You are managing the machinery people. And uh, it's uh, not a desk job at all. It's not. I understand. That. And yeah. that was the first hurdle that I faced. That was the first mm -hmm. hurdle. It, it, was, why, you know, it yeah. was totally different. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the experience was different and I was not really used to sitting and doing anything sort of. So, yeah, I was told that when you started in August very recently, it was very difficult for you to concentrate in the beginning. So, take us through that. And I understand your motivation for the MBA, so motivation for the GMAT now. But take us through what was difficult here, please. The initial apprehension that I had was the I've been working for so long. I'm not very young. I'm almost 37. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was talking to Richa and I was uh, telling her, hey, do people do this at this age? And she assured me, there are people who do this at this age. And... If yeah, you put we have people in their mid thirties and late thirties doing things. So uh, that yeah. is definitely there. Yeah. Uh, so the, the initial apprehension was there, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, sitting for long hours was a big hurdle because mm -hmm. initially I would get fidgety. I would want to look at my phone. I'll my body would ache because mm -hmm. uh, and ship you have a really active lifestyle, and in right, fact, right. I'm sure also I'm very active. So I'm just not used to sitting. So the initial around ten days, uh, it took me really a real amount of focus to actually sit down and I, I there's something called a Pomodoro technique I don't mm. know if you've heard of it it's something like you work really hard for 25 minutes and take a break for five minutes somebody mm. told me about that a friend of mine and I followed it for the last initial five six days I would work really hard I would just mm. put my phone away put it on timer 25 minutes mm. and then take five minutes of break after I have studied mm. and I would do this in cycles and slowly after 10 days I felt that my productive hours are increasing I would sit for eight hours from the first day but my initial property hours were maybe just four hours uh, okay. it was just a video of three hours would take me five six hours to complete understandable yeah. understand so after so, 10 days i was uh, able to churn out let's say six seven hours of productive study yes oh that's fabulous to know a couple of more things so what were your challenging areas when you started like everyone has some struggles and some strengths so uh, so yeah. uh, uh, i have to say that i was starting from ground zero Right. Ground mm -hmm. zero meaning I had no idea about GMAT. I had no idea what kind of questions I'll mm -hmm. be encountering. So first August, when I sat down, I first went through all the questions. I felt uh, the particularly for the CR and RC questions, mm -hmm. I felt this is going to take some effort. Mm -hmm. So those were the areas I was a little scared of initially. Mm -hmm. But as I got going and as I went through the top 1% content, which is absolutely fabulous, it mm -hmm. you know, builds up on the basics. First, it introduces, it introduces you to the basics and then builds up very slowly and in very detailed fashion. The explanations are really detailed. So that really helped me to get rid of that fear of uh, RC mm -hmm. and uh, CR. And, uh, so you do what, believe, what, Neeraj, uh, sorry to interrupt, but you do is, believe we do cover all the basics in each of the areas? If, if I have to, I, I have, now that I've scored a 760, there are people coming up and asking me, Kare, kaise kya, yaar? how did you do it? Mm -hmm. So I told them the only content that you need to refer to is Mm. Top one person. That is all you need to do. Even if you are zero, you have not mm. seen anything like this, like I had. Mm. So you can just build up from it and maybe just have a look at the OGs. That is yeah, all. yeah, obviously. We also suggest that for verbal. Yeah, but that is all. You just don't need to look at anything else because every the questions, all types of questions are discussed. The explanations are, especially let's say a question on sentence correction. You need to know which is the right answer, but you also need to know which option is wrong and why. So right. those explanations are really detailed and those really help. 
I think the explanations really helped me to get a grip on every topic. So verbal overall was your challenge, can I say? Uh, initial 10-15 days, but then I felt that I'm doing really well in verbal. Uh, mm -hmm. So it got going. Uh, initial 10-15 days, I was a little apprehensive. Uh, but once how, I went through yeah. the content, it got really easy for me. How about the quantitative bit? Being an engineer, was it easier for you or was it still rusty because you'd been away for so long? I, it was a bit rusty. Uh, I I got a 49. I would have liked it to be 50, but uh, I don't, don't think it was a big a big hurdle for me. I felt I'm comfortable with quant section. Okay, understandable. And uh, you really feel that some of the areas, let's say what people do is they do a lot of uh, theory and then very little practice or they practice, 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 but don't build on the concepts. I've always advised that you should build a very good foundation. The amount is not as important. The con Let's yes. say someone does 10,000 questions or five, but genuinely. So what is your take on this? I, I totally agree because I studied for maybe 40, 42 days. I was telling Richard that. Right. Uh, out of the 47 days, probably I stayed for 40, 42 days. That's, mm. And that is like, uh, if it takes six hours a day, that's 200 mm. to 40 mm. hours of good study. So right. you, you don't have the time to do a thousand questions. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, uh, I would say 200, 250 hours is a mm. decent time, 250 to 300. I think you also say the same. Right, right, right. 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 Absolutely. So, that, so, so that is a decent time, but it doesn't give you the time to do a thousand questions. You should definitely build on the concepts. Like example for the, 100 most important questions on SC, right? Right. You have that. Those 100 questions are, are cover every kind of question, I would say. So if you mm -hmm. really understand the basics of those 100 mm -hmm. questions, you should be able to do a lot in SC. You should not have a lot of hurdles after that. Okay. So how about... Say, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah so work. how about this, uh, each of the areas, we have some method like octave or prime or right, 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 let's right. say for quant also, I say write very little, for example, think through data sufficiency because they can be traps. So traps technique or critical reasoning, we say assumption is your focus. So, I mean, did this really help you? Can you tell one uh, by one? one part, uh, so, uh, so I would like to say that the one part that really helped me was the elimination and the verification thing. Right. Because initially I was making a lot of mistakes. Uh, in the RC but, part, you're saying yes, of the yes, octave exactly. bit, right? Correct, correct. I'm sorry. Uh, in the octave part, when we are doing RC, mm -hmm. initially I was making a few mistakes, rather more than a few mistakes. And that was, I felt later on my week section. Mm -hmm. But uh, following the elimination and verification, it really mm -hmm. helped. It is, you, uh, sometimes you're just confused between two or three options. So you have to mm -hmm. again go through, yeah, or is to eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Mm -hmm. And the right question, you have to verify it from the passage mm -hmm. that it is totally supported by the passage. So mm -hmm. that really helped me a lot. And same goes for Prime. Actually, after, uh, if you really absorb the different techniques and practice mm -hmm. the relevant questions, it becomes sort of a unconscious, uh, rather a subconscious uh, effort mm -hmm. from you. It becomes a habit. Right. I think. Yeah, you have to inculcate a habit of following these uh, techniques unconsciously. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Initially, you consciously do them and they become yeah, subconscious yeah, right. over time. If you practice them and if like you see and the videos and the class session guides and the practice contents, it's, it, right, right. and we had a sort of a, a total Excel sheet where we were told ki, aap aise se karo. you go through this like this, a structured uh, work okay. approach. So that really helped me. I just followed it. I just followed it. Right, right. A lot of people also, rather than uh, do some consolidated mocks and see, they do a lot of mocks. So what was your strategy? Did you do a few mocks only or a I, lot of them? I did a total of five mocks. So right. Five or six is enough, I think. I wouldn't say that we should do a lot of it. Just enough to get a feel and understand mm -hmm. what your weak areas and something like that. Okay, please describe your test day. I mean, was there anything unusual for you? Was it all smooth sailing? Because 44 in verbal is a phenomenal performance. So for someone who has been away from studies for so long and who initially had a very tough time concentrating, and verbal is a game of concentration apart from techniques. So just describe how your test day was, please. The test day was uh, actually, uh, of course, you are full of nerves. You are a bundle of nerves and it takes time to, in the starting, you are really nervous. but. Uh, so I did the, uh, I guess most people do. You start off with the uh, uh, integrated reasoning and AWS section, and then you go to quant, and then you do the verbal in end. At least I followed it. Mm -hmm. And by the time you are done with integrated and AWS section, you are calmed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it helps in doing the verbal in the start is little uh, jittery, right. so jittery. So you have calmed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt that I was prepared enough. I was well prepared to take on the questions. In fact, uh, I found some parts pretty easy. Okay, this is going quite smoothly. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. So there was nothing unusual or too surprising on the test day, particularly. I wouldn't say there was something anything too surprising. I found the questions since I the content has a great variety of questions. You don't really feel that this question has never been seen. Yeah, this question is out of the blue. Ah, yeah, what is it? You don't feel that. Maybe there are tough questions. You make mistakes, uh, but at least you know that this question is going yeah, to take long. Yeah. Let me just skip it. right understandable very very nicely summarized and now you are applying to iims right particularly correct, correct. yeah yeah yes that's fabulous to know and one of the applications you are probably submitting very soon or already have submitted uh, i have submitted two applications and uh, in bangalore and calcutta and i'll be submitting the ahmedabad one in a couple of days. i've already and got do you have any part. other plans of going abroad or you know doing another mm -hmm. mba or only in india you are looking only india i am i'm considering i don't want to do it only in india for some personal reasons that's fabulous to know so neeraj uh, very very nice and we really are very happy that you had such a great job thank you thank you and, and thank uh, you for curating such a wonderful uh, content it's absolutely fabulous right all right thank you for your time thank then you. thank you bye bye bye, bye neeraj bye. all the best yeah thank you